right? So just got up, came home, ready, got up. And everything, she was the neatest person in the world and the happiest person in the world. And her and my father uh, were just wonderful friends. So now we fast forward to, by the time I meet Suzanne, and uh, I went to a party. She lived in South Pasadena. And she, um, uh, and there's three other girls. So I went there with this uh, kind of a girlfriend, and that's how I met Suzanne. And uh, then I didn't see her again for about uh, maybe a year and a half or so. And I saw her at a uh, Mexican wedding uh, party. And uh, she was there, and I remember her from the time that I met her. We kind of hit it off. And uh, from there, we started dating. And so uh, we dated on, and I was in, uh, uh, I was in Cal State LA. So I was in my first year at Cal State LA, my third year, I think, of college. And, uh, and then we you know, decided to get married. Uh, and it was, uh, so I had to stop my college life. And, uh, uh, and so uh, we got married, and we went to live with her mother. And so uh, we got out of, first time we got out of bed together, uh, she's, I started to go to the bathroom. She said, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm going to the bathroom. She said, no, no. Before we leave the bedroom, we make the bed. <laughs> now, this was a shock to me to make the bed. I never made a bed in my life, as I just mentioned. So uh, I said, well, okay. You know, when wrong we do is a wrong we do, so I, so I made the bed. So now I, I, I go off to work, and I come home, and at night, the socks are on the floor. I said, my goodness, the socks are on the floor. They should have been put in the hamper. Suzanne must have forgot somehow. So the next day I get up and I do the same thing, just make it better. And I come back and two pairs of socks are there. I said, I gotta, I gotta remind her what she's supposed to do. So I said, that's the end. The socks were on the floor. And I know you're very neat and organized. And she says, yes, I left them there purposely because you're supposed to put the socks in the hamper. Remember, we were uh, princes at my home. So slowly I had to adjust. And uh, uh, Suzanne, Suzanne, like my mother, was very neat and organized and very clean. And so, but so anyways, we, and then, then Laura arrived soon after that. And so uh, we lived for a short period of time. And then, uh, uh, and then we got an apartment. And in this apartment, uh, we had uh, one half or third of, of the ugliest purple couch you ever saw. We had one Cervelle refrigerator. And if you know anything about the Cervelle refrigerator, it's got to take weight at the time. And somehow I got into the apartment. I don't steal things because I don't lost control, but little things were heavy. I made it in. I had to rest like about a half an hour. I was so exhausted from getting this kind of thing in. And then we had her bedroom set, the heavy bedroom set. And then we had Laura's crib. That's all we had in the house. And that's all we had for two years while I went to school. And so, um, you know, she worked full time. I went to part time went to school. And then I graduated, or I graduated from college. And then uh, we, uh, we wound up buying a home. And uh, Suzanne was really in her element. She uh, bought this home in the southern part of Alhambra between her mother's house, Mary, and uh, my, my parents' house. And so it was very convenient. We had like a 10 freeway. And uh, she uh, slowly started decorating. So the first thing she did when we got there was she uh, decided to decorate the, uh, the breakfast room. And uh, somehow she could wallpaper. She could always decorate. She got, got the right lamps, got the right table, got the right chairs. And that one room was decorated. It was the whole house and part of the floor, so it was pretty empty, except for this room. So we got a, uh, a table for the dining room. And it was really a picnic table. It was a metal table. So then we got that. And then we had this ugly purple couch in the living room. That's all that we had. But slowly maturity, we started to accumulate things. And uh, we brought a, a, a dining room set in Beverly Hills. We brought it home. I can't remember if my brother helped me or not, but we brought it home. And uh, then his friend Ilo refinished it. And so now we have a beautiful dining room set. Our living room sitting on the farm behind. And then we had a fire. And I don't know if Bill created the fire. I don't want to say anything. Or if Laura created the fire, but we had a fire. And that was the best deal we ever had. Because the fire pretty much took care of the living room. So the insurance money, Suzanne, uh, decorated that place so beautifully. She had ideas on how she wanted it done. She had big, massive um, drapes put in the front because we had a very tall ceiling. She had my brother work in the fireplace. Uh, she, uh, we uh, 
uh, she had some carpeting put in. She had, uh, uh, she was very clever. She had, uh, uh, not tile, but uh, uh, a tile like a material, but it's in the entryway. And uh, she just chose the colors, and they were just gorgeous. So she did a beautiful job there. Uh, and the whole house, she, she slowly fixed up the house. We bought furniture for my father's uh, company at a discount. And, uh, and so she, so, so from this meager beginning, we slowly started to accumulate a few things. And, uh, and then the other passion that Suzanne had, besides decorating, which she was a master of, is she loved gardening. And somehow she knew every botanical name of every plant. And Suzanne was not one to brag or, or, or in that way. So we could go and, uh, and she could name every plant she knew the name. I was like shocked. I took a class with her. And uh, I only took one class with her. And I realized, uh, and here's something that I found out. The way she studied was she would look at a page and make a couple of notes. And look, turn the page and a couple of things. And she would do this. I, on the other hand, had to read it very carefully. I would reread it. And it took me much longer to learn, but she learned almost instantly. She was very smart. She should have been a pharmacist. Uh, but in those days, you know, women became clerks. So she became a clerk. So she was really happy with that job. And she was really not that good at it because her talents were elsewhere. So uh, after I graduated from college uh, and I went to work as a CPA, and work, and then I passed my CPA exam, and, and then I uh, uh, we bought a couple of cars, and we bought this house, and we just were slowly um, uh, also getting to know each other better. But uh, as I mentioned, she loved this garden, so she got a landscape architect. She had it all laid out. I was I was gardening in those days. I wasn't a Mexican gardener, since I was Mexican, and I could garden. I was a Mexican gardener, so I so I did all the gardening, and, and we really worked well together. She would lay everything out, she'd give me the instructions. She'd showing what we needed and that was just real. And so in the uh, in this time period that we were together, uh, I'll be there a long time, but it doesn't find me. Really the time uh, from that time period up until maybe the first 10 years of our marriage, especially the probably from once we moved into the apartment together, we never had an argument. So we really just got along pretty good as I why. She was very frugal, I was very frugal. Um, she had a nice sense of humor. Uh, uh, she was uh, hardworking. Uh, she was. Uh, um, she loved to read, and so she read more books on how it's beautiful, on on, on gardening. I mean, we, I, I would say we had a stack of books, almost tall as a ceiling, and put them one on top of the other. And she read a lot, and we used to read together. And, but I would read, you know, history, I would read military history, and we would sit down two or three or four hours at a time and read, because at that time there was only like 11 channels, so you had to be very select about the ones you wanted to watch. And so we, you know, we just kind of did all of this together. So we, uh, uh, we wound up, uh, uh, then she decided to go to college. So she went to college and uh, she got her degree, she became a dietitian. And uh, she was, uh, she worked all over Los Angeles and she liked being a dietitian and she was very good at it because again, she had this kind of scientific uh, uh, flavor to her. Uh, I used to call her the master of her own hair. She could comb her hair and make up her hair any way she wanted. And she was really good at it. So one day she'd have her hair made up this way and another day she'd have her hair made up another way. Uh, and uh, uh, so I used to just kind of marvel at, at, at her ability to manage her hair, which was always red from you know, by the time that I, oh, when I met her, when she was a blonde, it was another thing. So she was a blonde for a short period of time. And then when I met her, well, it was taking me out, she was a blonde. And then one day I saw her and she was a redhead. And then I realized that she was a redhead because she was always my favorite color. So um, anyway, so then so we just kind of went along. And, uh, 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 and then of course, Bill arrived. And so now, and she, at first, she only wanted Laura. She didn't want Linda, so I could you know, kind of mention this to her. And uh, it turned out that she had a friend, and the friend always complained that she was the only daughter, and she really wanted a, a brother or a sister. And so between my asking a couple of times and her thinking about this, Bill was created, and therefore <laughs> born, and, and therefore here. Uh, so we had uh, Laura and, and Bill together, and so those were two wonderful joys in my life. 
And uh, I've heard a lot from Sue Beth. She had a to-do list. Every day she had a to-do list. And every day she would update it. And I was, I was, I was like, she was so organized and everything got done after a fashion. There was nothing that was never undone. She was very timely, she was uh, very dependable. Um, and like I said, easy to, to live with. And so these are wonderful memories that, uh, that uh, I have of Suzanne. Uh, uh, and I'm very grateful for those memories. Uh, now she's in a different place, I think a happier place. She was married, she married her mother, and Linda's mother. Uh, and uh, uh, they got along great. Uh, and uh, uh, of course it was harder to see Suzanne in the later years because she was not the same person. And then of course she got, her health started to deteriorate. So I choose to go back to this really happy time that we had when she was young and she was vibrant and uh, and, and then she is now she's that way again. So she's now uh, uh, enjoying her time with Mary, uh, being the Suzanne of old. And so I want to thank Suzanne and I want to thank you on behalf of Suzanne and I know Sam will do the same for being here and, and, and honoring her uh, her lifetime. Story about my mom. Uh, I will now share a few of my own. Uh, just that time my mom, when my mom, uh, she was complex. She could be supportive, she could be combative, and at times where she could be relaxed. Um, so I want to share a few stories about uh, those things. Uh, the first is um, really just supportive in my education. My mom and dad always emphasized the importance of education. And when I was five years old, I wanted to be a fireman, which I guess probably is a fireman for some reason. But my mom had other ideas. She said that I was going to be a neurosurgeon. And she asked, you know what that, that is? And I did not. She explained to me that I was a brain surgeon and that they did not want my brain fired. <laughs> so I did not become a doctor, but it did inspire me to, to be, you know, pursue school and higher education. I always had in my mind that I would go to graduate school, but eventually I became an attorney. And you know, I thank her for her her direction and her inspiration that really motivated me to continue on that path. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is a friendship. Uh, my mom could be very combative, as some of you may know. Uh, she would fall out with everybody: her sister Linda, my dad Gil her friend Debbie and me. Um, she would say, uh, after, after those things would happen to me, she would always say, I thought you would never talk to me again. And I didn't know what she was talking about. I hadn't, wasn't aware of anything that serious had occurred, but you know, last time we talked, uh, we talked about something and she would think about it and uh, it would lead her to think that the, the, end was, the end of our relationship was there. But, um, but you know, after I would come to see her, she would, she would tell me that, and then she, she had a little tear in her eyes, and she was always amazed at how I could have forgiven her, or, uh, or what, I don't know, but, but in her mind, that was something, uh, something great that had just happened. Um, she would say the same thing about her sister. I remember uh, telling her that her sister, I would tell her all the time that her sister invited us to Thanksgiving, and she would be amazed, and like, she did? And I'd, I'd say, yeah. And even though we had been there the previous year for Thanksgiving, and we'd been there a few months before for Easter dinner, uh, she would still be amazed that, uh, that she'd been invited. And I guess that was partly because I was always the go-between uh, uh, between these invitations, so I'd always be the one to, to let her know about that. But the thing is, is that when we, when we would leave, She'd always be happy that she spent time together with family. And she would say, uh, it was so nice to see my sister and I had such a nice time tonight. And, uh, and then I would drop her off. Um, she also enjoyed uh, going to dinner with uh, family. Uh, 
every single time we have family dinner, we go out with uh, Caitlin, myself, and sometimes my dad would join us. And she always looked forward to that. When my father would join us, um, she would talk to him the whole time. Uh, <laughs> Caitlin and I would sit there and talk to each other, and she would, she would talk to my dad. And I just want to tell you this because uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but she truly um, cherished your friendship and companionship. It really meant a lot to her. So um, I just want to thank you for, for having spent that time that might not have seemed like anything special, but to her, it really, it really made a, made a difference. And then um, on the last thing about relaxation, um, people say I'm pretty calm, uh, but there was one time when my mom was even more relaxed than I was. Uh, she would always laugh every time she told me a story. Um, when I was in elementary school, I used to stay with my grandparents during the week. And on the weekends, on Friday night, I'd go back to my parents, and my mom would usually come pick me up and uh, drive me home. Um, there was one time when she came to pick me up, and she was very relaxed that day, because she was taking a trunk ride. And uh, we were driving back, and there was a stalled car in the emergency lane uh, Right, right when we got off, it flew my, my Honda. And um, the emergency lane wasn't that wide. It was only like three feet wide. And so the car was sticking out three feet into the lane. And we approached it, and um, this car, it was one of those old cars where you know, it had a little door guard on, a little bumper guard, all the way from the front to the back. And the piece in the back had come off about six inches. It was sticking out. And uh, as we passed that car, my mom came so close, she shaved that little piece off, and it flew in the air. And uh, I jumped up in the seat and turned around, I see this little piece, you know, skittering down the road. I see this guy with a look on his face. He is completely shocked, his jaws open, and he can't, he can't believe what had happened. And I look at my mom, I said, oh my mom, I go, you just hit that car. And she, Look, casually looks over at me and says, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> and we kept on, kept on driving home. And I tell that story, my mom loved that story and every time she would tell it, she would, uh, we would have such a good laugh. Um, anyway, I just want to uh, say, uh, mom, you know, thank you for always being there for you know, spirited conversation and laughter and always supporting me in everything I did. Um, I love you and I'll miss you. She learned a lot from your mom. Her mother died when she was very young, like five years old or something like that. But uh, she, she uh, took it really hard. She said she learned so much just on how to, just on life. And she had so much class. And I always remember your mom being so classy and clean. You could not leave a mess. You guys remember that. <laughs> remember those days. 
and she left her, um, her plants. I have a lot of those plants. <laughs> yeah, you haven't cleaned these many, many times. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. I remember that. <laughs> yes, and she threw the greatest Christmas parties. Yeah. <coughs> One Christmas party I was there and I got hurt. You remember that? Yeah. I got hit in the head with a, <laughs> with a toy. I think it was from Bennett or Brian or one of those two. And it just split my head open. I was bleeding everywhere. And she was really horrified by that because I'm messing up her house. You know? Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And she was the one that took me in there and got me all, you know, patched up and everything. And it was really nice for her to do that. But, uh, you know, she'd be sorely missed. And I know she had a very hard time at the end of her life. But I have a really lot of fond memories of all the Christmas parties and all the things we did. She was a very wonderful person. You know, she's going to be missed. No, go on. Thank you. Pat. Thank you, Dave. And if you want, if, if you'd like to go to Mahalo, you can. You do. Okay. Hmm? Huh? Okay, I'll just say a few things about All right, well, let's wait. Ernie's going to say something. Uh, I'll right. take a stab at it. <laughs> um, uh, I met Suzanne through Linda, our sister. My name is Ernie, uh, married to Linda. Uh, Suzanne and Bill would come over, and Caitlin would come over to the house. And uh, I always remember when I first met Suzanne, uh, I would ask her if she wanted to have a drink. And she always hesitated. But I thought, you know, that might help break the ice a little bit. So I would ask her what she'd want. And of course, she didn't know the varieties of drinks, but like Bill said, she's a very smart lady. <laughs> so I would ask her, would you like red wine or white wine? Or would you like a margarita? Hmm, that might be good, a margarita instead of wine. So I would make her a margarita, but she would always ask me, what did you put in there? I'd say, oh, very little, very little. But I'd always make sure I give Suzanne a little extra, more than what she told me I was supposed to put in there. <laughs> and I would notice after a few uh, sips of her drink, see, boy, that tastes good. And I'd notice that that would start to break the ice. And of course, it helped. <laughs> but she was a very clever lady. She loved watching different programs. And like Bill said, as Bill had said, uh, she, her mind was broad. She just knew so many things about so many different things. It was amazing. And she loved to play games when we played games uh, at the table after eating. That was another thing she enjoyed. So the interaction with everybody at the table as time would go on, it just it got better and better and better as time would go on. Because as Bill said, she'd be over there for Thanksgiving, Easter, or even birthdays. Christmas. And Christmas. But she really, and she had a laugh. Oh, when she smiled, it was like a flower. But she had a beautiful smile. Uh, Suzanne will be missed, but I think she is in a better place. And had lots of fun with her. Had a lot of laughs, too. Some of them, but we won't bring those up. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you for okay. those words and how uh, Bill. I uh, really appreciate it. If you want, we can go um, over to Mahari with him. Okay. Meet you? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Cheers. We have him ready, ready. Yeah, there you go.